Welcome to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. It's week two of the NFL season. I'm Craig Mish along with George Kurtz. We're getting you ready for all of the upcoming games on Sunday, on Monday. We'll cover it all for you. There's already massive injury news from the NFL. Finding out on Friday, players that we didn't even know were going to miss the game are missing this week's game. Already those of you who have wide receivers, starters, are having to look to the waiver wire. We're going to dive right into it. And George... Great to be back with you for another week on the show in my two big leagues. Uh, you know, w- one of the leagues had one of the most points in the league. The, you know, Daniels helped me quite a bit. Quarterback from Washington, he was awesome. My other league, I ran into a situation I'm sure a lot of people did, which was I had Christian McCaffrey going into Monday night. And generally speaking, I consider myself one of the smarter fantasy owners. I did not have a backup for McCaffrey going into Monday night. So I got that zero. I don't know how many times I've gotten a zero in 20 years or 30 years playing fantasy football, maybe once or twice, basically with a guy not playing. And that's what happened to me. So one and one in that league. Let me tell you about my, uh, my week one. Okay. Uh, I'm playing in nine leagues. This doesn't count. Uh, doesn't count uh, best ball. Just our regular leagues here. I only got McCaffrey in one league. I only had the number one pick in one league. And Craig, that was the league where I was auto drafted because a buddy of mine wanted me to to set a roster for a team. So uh, yeah, I had McCaffrey in that league. Didn't have Jordan Mason. Uh, Anyway, it didn't matter unless Jordan Mason had a hundred points. I wasn't going to win that week, but uh, same situation as you. I didn't have a replacement there. Uh, As Probably a little bit my fault. I realized that afterwards, well, Mason was on the waiver wire. I could have claimed him uh, that week, but uh, not a league I'm really all that uh, worried about here. But listen, that's the breaks, right? It's injuries. I'm a big believer. 12-team league. Three teams will be eliminated because they don't pay attention. Three more are eliminated because of injuries. There's nothing you could have done. You're the bad luck yeah. team. You have all these injuries, and there's not, nothing you can do to escape it. You know, and uh, I just if I can just avoid that being that injury team, that team that gets hurt, I only got to compete with five other uh, teams to get uh, – to get a prize. Yeah. yeah, and this week, in, in this is a dynasty league. I'm back-to-back champions. Not that anybody cares watching, but I've won the last two championships, mainly because of McCaffrey. All week long, I'm throwing out these trade requests. Late-round rookie picks. Give me Chuba Hubbard. Give me Devin Singletary. I would advise the same, folks. I would not panic, but get somebody who is playing You know, this week. Don't go into a week with another zero. You got to make sure you have somebody that is capable of that. But meanwhile, the big story, of course, in fantasy football moving forward has to be the Miami Dolphins and what happened on Thursday night with Tua Tungavailoa, who suffered yet another concussion. And unfortunately for Tua, this seems like it's going to cost him some time. As of right now, uh, basically, if we dial it back to Friday morning, which is the only time the Dolphins had their media access, Mike McDaniel said that they obviously are after another quarterback and they're going to try and bring somebody in. Uh, But what he said is Skylar Thompson is the starter for the time being. George, we've seen Skylar Thompson play. He's kept the Dolphins in games, some of them, that he's played in. I mean, he really has, but it hasn't really been through the air. It's mostly been running. And so, you know, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, I mean, it's kind of the secondary story. The primary story is poor Tua, right? Like, this is just a horrible story to talk about and to even, you know, wonder what's going to happen in the future. But we are a fantasy show, and the – the, the prognosis and outlook for the skill position players on the Dolphins takes a massive hit without Tua being in the lineup. Oh, absolutely. And like you said, we do wish the best for Tua and what his decision will be in his future here. But at the very least, he's going to miss some time, right? He's going to miss some games here. I mean, uh, Thompson, I, uh, there aren't too many teams that can uh, afford a quarterback going out, right? we got the same situation with Jordan Love, right? Malik Willis. He's going to hurt the overall production of every other player there. Uh, they could bring in a quarterback. Ryan Tannehill is out there, you know, former Dolphin. Maybe they do or go out and sign him. But even if they did, let's just say yeah, the two is out six weeks, eight weeks, the year, whatever it might be. When will Tannehill learn the offense? When will he build, be a quarterback you can rely on that'll make uh, Tyreek Hill a first round pick again? That'll make Jalen Waddle a first round, uh, you know, whatever it was, a wide receiver two, a third round pick. That could be weeks, could be a month. Here, so this uh, this is a drop down effect throughout the roster. Here, I have Tyree Kill in one league, and I'm like, oh god, uh, what am I going to do? He's not going to return that yeah. kind of value anymore. He's just not. You know, Waddle's the same thing here. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm panicking. I'm a little worried. There's nothing you can do. You're still starting Hill. I'm not going to bench him. But now instead of you know getting hoping to get low 20s, 22, 23 points, am I hoping for 12, 14? Yeah, and on top of it, I don't know that any quarterback is going to save the Dolphins. You know, even if it was Tom Brady coming out of retirement, George, their offensive line was the lowest graded offensive line 
uh, in all of the land in football uh, on Thursday night. Lowest grade given out to any offensive line this season. They also played terrible against Jacksonville. And so they're very fortunate that they have these speedy running backs, but they just cannot protect the quarterback. So TBD on the Dolphins will get into the Buffalo Bills coming up in a few minutes, what they accomplished on Thursday night. Meanwhile, you go into a fantasy season. You're like, I got Puka Nakua. I got Marvin Harrison Jr. I got Hollywood Brown. I got Jordan Addison. I'm feeling real good, right? They're all out. They're all out this week. I mean, this is a crazy first start to the fantasy season. Hollywood Brown placed on injured reserve. We knew he was going to miss a week. We didn't think he was going to miss four weeks, which is what he's going to miss, three more. Um, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., very slow start to, uh, to his start. And then we found out late Friday, George, that uh, Jordan Addison, I, maybe I was, I mean, I'm hosting shows every day here on the network, but I saw that maybe he missed practice one day. I was not aware that he was going to miss this upcoming game. And that is a rock solid wide receiver two-ish, three-ish flex. I mean, starting in every fantasy league, big blow to the wide receiver position very early on. Yeah, we so we had hints that Addison wasn't going to play. He's got the ankle injury, uh, came out of the game last week. So I don't think that's a big shock. It uh, doesn't help us any. I have Addison in a couple of leagues. Uh, yeah, I would have liked to start him in, in actually both leagues. I don't think I can really have a great backup. But this is why depth is so important here, so you can survive these injuries. NFL, man, it, it, fantasy NFL is a game of attrition. You're going to have injuries. If you can stay healthy the whole year, well, guess what? You're probably going to win, all right, because most teams can't. We're going to have uh, uh, issues here. Harrison not all that worried about it. it was one bad game we can go through history of all the uh, top wide receivers and hall of famers who had bad first yeah. games all right so i'm not panicking all that much here granted as someone who has harrison in a couple of things i wasn't thrilled about kyler murray saying it's not my job to get him the ball you know he's trying to say the offensive coordinator has designed plays to get the ball to harrison maybe that's true maybe that's not you saw harrison came out and said the right things here i have to do a better job of getting open and all that so right. i think it will be fine i'm not like I said, i'm not panicking about this uh he's starting for me this week again you know once again i'm not i don't have good enough uh good enough that they could sit him uh, i think they have a decent matchup as well here so i'm not worried about harrison How, hollywood brown listen odds are at draft time you knew he was hurt right yeah, so if you drafted true. him it's, it's the chance you took. It's the chance you took. You. Although we didn't expect – we thought he'd play week two at the latest here. We did not expect he was going to go on the IR, though we're hearing today that the injury is not healing like it should. So he has to undergo surgery to fix it. Yep, and uh, Puka Nakua lasted all of, you know, five minutes. He had this injury in the preseason. He was placed on injury reserve yeah. as well. And, you know, George, I think that's another you know, waiver wire attack this week. It's not just for people who have Puka Nakua. Generally speaking, Matthew Stafford is going to lock in on one guy, but that doesn't mean he doesn't throw to two. And so the Rams definitely have some other good options there. But if uh, you drafted Cooper Cup a little bit later, I think that's a player you're feeling really good about right now going into week two. Oh, I think you're flipping out, right? I mean, uh, Stafford, I mean, he just had eyes for him in uh, last week versus Detroit. What do you have, uh, you know, 100 targets there, 15? I mean, wow. I don't think that changes all that much. Although defenses, remember, they're going to game plan to stop Cup. They won't. Listen, they'll slow him down. They won't be able to stop. It didn't work He's before. Why would it coverage. work now? Uh, because there's no one else there. They they will work it out. Kai, then then again, Kai Williams, that should really help him because he'll, he's not going to see too many stacked boxes now, is he? But, uh, I mean, if I'm if I'm game playing, Cup is not beating me. He's going to get his catch, for sure, but he's not beating me. One thing to keep in mind, Cup had all those catches. His yards for catch were not much. All right, he was catching a little itty bitty shots here. He yeah, didn't have much yak, and he didn't have much uh, deep plays here. So maybe that's what defenses are doing here. Just keep him in front of us. They they can't sustain a drive that way. Yeah, I'm eight catches for you know 65 yards and a touchdown. Everybody will take that any day of the week this week if if Cooper Cup ends up doing that. All right, let's take a quick time out here on the show. When we come back next, we recap Thursday night football. Josh Allen with another huge game in fantasy. The big star, of course, was James Cook. We'll dive into that. We'll also look ahead, of course, to all the games this weekend, latest injury updates as well. You're watching Fantasy Sports Today here on SportsGrid. And we're back right after this. Don't go away. You know what? What can one of these quarterbacks or wide receivers do for me this year to make a wager 
it's got to be the running conditions there for Jaden Daniels. In regards to Jaden Daniels, you know I was on him in regards to the Heisman Trophy. I actually think he's going to do it on the ground, through the air, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions, playing in Cliff Kingsbury's offense where he wants to spread it and throw it. I think he's going to put up dynamic numbers. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest, handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like none other. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Talk about your freshman year at Alabama and even the redshirt year that got you ready to perform at the highest level. You had to learn a lot about humility, about being patient to play at Alabama. And you still knew that you're going to have a shot to win a championship every year. And so that that's the line. And so I think like that's what's really missing with today's football. You got NIL, you got social media. The early line, only on Sports Grid. And welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. It was a blowout on Thursday night. The Buffalo Bills defeated the Miami Dolphins in a blowout fashion. I mean, honestly, the game looked like it was over at the half, and it definitely was over in the third quarter. Uh, the big story, of course, coming out of that is another concussion for Tua Tungavailoa. Uh, you know, bigger story, of course, for his personal life and health than anything else. But we've now had two fantasy starting quarterbacks going to miss at least weeks it would appear with Jordan Love uh, you know getting hurt in week one now Tua getting hurt in week two and uh, you know George he didn't even look that good when he was there I know that there was a ball that was thrown off a receiver and I'm not really sure what happened on the other interception the third interception was bad I mean there's nothing else to say about that you know people tend to make excuses for Tua it's just like a strange <laughs> sort of dynamic that's been going on for years I don't know why but uh, you know I like him I think he's a good quarterback but no one needs to make excuses for anybody picks or picks he threw three uh, but uh, future very cloudy, I would say, at the very least there. You're, you're not going to – whoever the Dolphins pick up, you're not going to pick up, okay? You're not going to do that. And, and you're not running to the waiver wire to pick up Gardner Minshew. But I do think that after the weekend, for those people who have Tua as their second quarterback, not their first, as their first, you know you have to make a move if you don't have a good second. But I think that most teams went about it in the following way in draft day, George, which is I'm going to draft Tua – but I'm also going to draft somebody else who is capable, or I'm going to draft somebody else capable, and then I'm going to draft Tua also. You don't see many leagues where people took Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Mahomes, and Tua. Like You don't see that because they felt very comfortable by taking those in the first five or six rounds. So that's definitely the approach, and I know most leagues lock after that, and you're not in a, in a 12 or 14-team league. It's not like you can go on the waiver wire right now and, and uh, pick up Kirk Cousins or something like that. There's a lot of strategy involved now. Uh, I can tell you, I have two. Uh, I have two in love on the same team, by the way. That team is just cursed. Uh, and the first thing I did when the injury happened here, I looked at the waiver wire. Okay, what quarterbacks are back? Because I was thinking, do I need to make a move now? I can't release Tua, but maybe I got to release somebody else to take a, the only quarterback that's left. Because theoretically, I don't have a quarterback next week. All right, but I looked on the waiver wire in that league. I'm lucky in that league. There were plenty of quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford was there. Kirk Cousins, you mm -hmm. just mentioned, was there. Not a lot of teams took back a quarterback, so I'm fine. You know, so I didn't have to panic about that. I'll make a move during the week. Uh, and that move maybe to release Tua. You know, if, uh, if I'm gonna, he's going to be out a while. Jordan loves my starter anyway. Hopefully he's back in a week or two. I may only need a quarterback for one week. And the other league, I mean, it's a deeper league. Uh, it's a one-quarterback league, but it's a league with 40-man rosters. Every quarterback's gone. 
All right, so I'm just screwed. I think Jacoby Brissett is my backup. So, uh, yeah, I'm in trouble. Uh, but that league, I wasn't going to win a championship anyway. It's a dynasty league. And uh, I'm sort of in middling hell there. I'm not bad, but I'm not good either. So it is what it is there. So you have to realize that. I will worry about, you know, like I said, Tyree Kill, going to take a hit. Jalen Waddle, yeah. going to take a hit. You know, this, it's more hill because that's your first round pick. Yes. And you're relying on 20 points week in, week out, right? You're not going to get that now. You're just not. You know, I think I think a chain's okay. I think he'll still get his uh, his yards there. We'll see what Raheem uh, most does if and when he comes back uh, from the oblique. But uh, it's a big question now because it's going to be going on. Uh, should Tua retire? You know, should he play? What if he gets cleared quickly? What if he doesn't get cleared? What if it's a month, two months, whatever it is? Uh, tricky injury, right? Concussions are uh, very tricky, especially with Tua's past. I believe this is now the fourth confirmed concussion, which means he's probably had others. Uh, but fourth confirmed, we know it's uh, it's not good. You know, especially uh, – and you think about it also. The two quarterbacks have signed big, massive contracts, or two of them. Uh, love, two of them got hurt already. This is why in the NFL, get your money when you can. Yeah, no, look, a lot of these times you have to take your chance on the quarterbacks. You know, Cleveland with Deshaun Watson, uh, Russell Wilson with Denver. I mean, these are mega contracts that just didn't work out. But you have to do it in order to hope that you've got the quarterback of the future. All right, so let's run through those numbers here real quick with Miami, and then we'll go to Buffalo. So Tyree Kill, uh, he had six targets, only three receptions, and 34 yards. I, I got to tell you, it was a very bizarre game plan for the Dolphins. It was, it was obvious immediately that they were trying to hurt the Dolphins down the field by not allowing those guys to get open, he and Waddle, but there was no adjustment whatsoever except for, like, flipping the ball to Tyree Kill behind the line of scrimmage. Very bizarre. Uh, George made a good comment about Waddle. I don't think Waddle is as hurt anyway, and I think that his numbers last night kind of showed that. I think he's still going to get his five catches and 50 yards. I know he got a little bit more than that last night, uh, but that's sort of, you know, it, it's not acceptable for a fantasy wide receiver, but you can push him down from two to three and be happy there. Uh, Devon A. Chain, I don't know what he was doing in the end of the game, George. He was amazing, though, last night. He looked, or Thursday night, he looked awesome. And uh, just racking up the fantasy points. But it was not a chain who was the star at running back, George, in that game. It was James Cook of the Buffalo Bills, man. Three touchdowns for James Cook. Hugh, I mean, he's already had coming out parties, but this was a big one in Miami. Yeah, uh, it was huge because he got the runs, the touchdown runs, right? On the first one, the one-yard run, all right, we're all thinking, here's Josh Allen. All right, he, and no, they gave it to Cook. So they, they had not done before. So uh, if you're a James Cook a guy, and I am in a couple of leagues here, uh, it was good news. It was good news. And, yes, that's the, that's the other thing we did at halftime, right? How many leagues did we either have James Cook or we play against them when we're getting demolished here? So uh, it's yeah. always uh, – always, it's probably the most – oh, God, now i got to check these leagues here. And you're always hoping yep. you, have, you, have, you have the player in more leagues than you're playing against them. Ended up working out for me. I only went against them in one league, and that's a total points league. So 11 of us are going against that player. What are you going to do here? So, uh, yeah. Now, is this a sign of things to come? i got to tell you, Craig, if this is a sign of things to come, James Cook is a running back one easy. He'll score double-digit touchdowns. All right, so we'll see how this is going to, uh, to work out here. But, yes, he had a great game uh, last night uh, there. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how this continues to work out here. Like I said, I wouldn't be running, running to figure out, oh, i got to put James Cook in my law, uh, you know, or bet on an anytime touchdown week in and week out. But it was good to see. But one thing about last night, because of what happened to Tua, everyone took the, uh, the fourth quarter off, right? They didn't play. The, I mean, all the yards was terrible. You know, and that's, that was disappointing. I mean, Josh Allen only threw for, what, 139 yards, only ran the ball a couple of times because they didn't. no one wanted to play anymore after the tour injury. All right, so I guess you could look at that as good news, too. So maybe the Hill injury, the Hill numbers and the Waddle numbers would have been better you know, if they had played the entire game with the quarterback. But uh, just disappointing overall fantasy. It was, we expected more from the game Thursday. Yeah, no, I, I definitely didn't. But it's just the theme thus far through one week and one game is quarterbacks throwing not just under 200 yards, but under 150 yards. I mean, this is kind of crazy. I don't know what's going on here in the NFL with a lot of these passing numbers being down. But, you know, certainly the guys who performed in a big way, those are the ones to target moving forward. We'll get into those quarterbacks who came off very big week one next.
it's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was so thinking, But he had that he problem. Was he was going there. Only on Sports Grid. Talk about your freshman year at Alabama and even the redshirt year that got you ready to perform at the highest level. You had to learn a lot about humility, about being patient to play at Alabama. And you still knew that you are going to have a shot to win a championship every year. And so that that's the line. And so I think, like, that's what's really missing with today's football. You got NIL, you got social media. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Everyone had him. Rookie of the year, offensive yep. player of the year. Yep. Bears are going to the Super Bowl. Eber Blues okay. coach of the year. He was terrible. If he's going to be successful, he's got to play within structure as much as possible. I get it. If the pocket breaks down, throw off the platform. That's fine. But within structure, when the play is there to be made, you need to make it. And he didn't do that. Pharrell, coast to coast, only on Sports Grid. 147 yards against the Jets and a touchdown? Man, the numbers are incredible. It's, it's the Shanahan connection, and, and that's just what it feels like. And, you know, Jordan Mason came into that game with a career 5.6 yards per carry. He's always been a very tough runner. He's always been good when called upon in small doses. You know, you mentioned the yardage, which was impressive, but 20, 28 carries. You know, that's what I'm looking at. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with George Kurtz. Well, fantasy football has taken quite a bit of hit at the quarterback position in week one, so much so that it almost didn't matter where you drafted a quarterback, at least for one week. I mean, we saw Thursday night. Neither quarterback performed pretty well. And while there were some really good performances, none of the top fantasy quarterbacks are off to good starts. I mean, pretty much. And the best start of all was not somebody that started in any 12-team league. Superflex, maybe. But George Baker Mayfield did not start in one fantasy league of 12 teams last week. I can, I mean, may, maybe. May, I don't want to say guaranteed not, because I don't know. Some people who live in Tampa, they probably started him. But he threw for four touchdowns, 289 passing yards. And dare I say, he's just picked right up where he left off at the end of last year. If you keep him clean, Baker Mayfield will put up points, right? I mean, you've got two great wide receivers at Evans and Godwin. Remember, Godwin's also another year off the ACL, so that's good news as well, uh, as he'll feel more and more comfortable. This team will score points, and I think that's I think that probably continues this week as well, by the way, against the Detroit Lions. We know they can be beat through the secondary once again, as you brought up earlier. We saw that. I think Cooper Cup is still catching passes uh, against that secondary from last week. So, yeah, Baker Mayfield's a, a solid quarterback, although I would agree with you, though. Outside of uh, – yeah, listen, I know Casey Hudson – Big Tampa Bay fan. Maybe she uh, started Baker Mayfield in some fantasy leagues. Other than that, I, I, I'm sure it was single-digit percentage-wise ownership for uh, Baker Mayfield in week one in one quarterback leagues. Yeah, and, and picked up in a lot of leagues right now, or as of last week, owned under 50% of rosters. My guess is that's changed a lot. All right, well, do we have a fantasy star on our hands here, uh, George? Here is the question with D Jaden Daniels of the Washington Commanders who, yes, the team was playing in garbage time, and he did pound some of those uh, passing yards and touchdowns at the end of the game. But undeniably, George, they called a lot of direct runs for Daniels, 88 rushing yards in his first game. And he doesn't have to do that every game in order to, uh, you know, get pay dirt. But he rushed for a touchdown, and then he rushed for another touchdown, 184 passing yards. And, you know, a lot of folks went into the fantasy season saying, hey, look, maybe this isn't Anthony Richardson, but it could be the next best thing. I'm here to tell you, I don't know. I'm sort of feeling like Daniels could be better than Anthony Richardson. I don't know if I'm going to go there yet. All right. But I think he's in the uh, conversation. Yeah. Uh, we, what did we hear at, uh, at draft time? A lot of people wanted a quarterback who could move. 
right? You don't want the guy who's going to take five, seven steps and throw the football anymore because you want that additional rushing yards. You know, you get 50, 60 yards, that's a touchdown, right? That's why Josh Allen is so valuable. Lamar Jackson is so valuable, right? You go up and down, Jalen Hurts. You go, okay, you go up and down here, uh, guys who can run the football. Richardson was, I think, uh, on ADP was the fifth quarterback taken. I, that's amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. It's because of the rushing yards that he can bring there. So, uh, yeah, I think Daniels uh, is going to be a good quarterback. I think Washington got their guy, and he can throw the football, too. I mean, we, we know McLaurin's a really good wide receiver. I, it may not be much else there. We'll see what uh, uh, McCaffrey can be. Luke McCaffrey can be there in time. Uh, but, you know, I do have hope for him. I think he, I think at season's end, he's going to be a quarterback one. It may be a low-end quarterback one, but a quarterback one nonetheless. Yeah, I, I was really impressed uh, watching him in that game. All right, now Anthony Richardson – has has proven that he's going to throw a lot of bombs. If you're playing in a league where a 50-yard touchdown, you get like an extra bonus point or two, he may be the most valuable quarterback in fantasy. But, I mean, George, how many completions did this guy have? Did he have 10 completions in the game? I mean, it was very erratic. And all these yards were on bombs. He did throw a pick. He rushed for 56 yards. Uh, look, he's going to have a big year. He's going to have a big fantasy year. There's no question about it. I don't know about the long-term viability here. And look, give him credit. He hung in there with the Houston Texans. My fear for him, George, is that when you go back and you watch film, if you protect the deep ball against Richardson, he could hurt you with his legs. And that may be where all of his fantasy value is coming from. I cannot see him throwing two, like, 70-yard bombs like he did again last week. He actually had nine completions last week. Nine. nine. Wow. Uh, that's that's amazing. Uh, and he had 212 yards. Uh, and, and by the way, he should have had two other long passes. Right yes. to Mitchell that he did not connect on. He should have easily had over 300 yards uh, and 11 completions. It would have been a monster day here. But you're, once again, the point is well taken. Yeah, he'll connect on some bombs, but he was 9 of 19. So he's not connecting on the uh, intermediate stuff. Yet. He's just throwing the ball up there and receivers are running uh, under it. Uh, listen, that should come in time, right? Practice time. I think he will get better here. I think Richardson is going to be fine. Does need to learn how to take, uh, how to avoid hits. All right. Once again, that hit. Remember that hit from Tua last night. He initiated it. Slide. The rules are made for you not to get hit. Take advantage of them. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Tua did not do that either. Some other options on the waiver wire potentially. Uh, Derek Carr with a big game. He plays against Dallas. Geno Smith plays against Miami next week. That could be a good part. Be right back. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting card. That was the Lincoln! But he had that he program was already going year. there! Only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest show will have you prepared this season like none other.
All right, so let's say you're playing in a 12-team league and you just found out Jordan Addison is out for uh, the week or, you know, Cooper Cup is out. you got to replace someone. Uh, you know, and, and maybe you're going into now next week already thinking, my gosh, I can't play uh, Jalen Waddle or Tyree Kill. I mean, I don't know how you can't, but look, it's it's dire in some situations. We're only week one in, and it's sort of crazy. Maybe, you know, Malik Neighbors is somebody who's been banged up. Maybe you don't want to play him. So let, let's go over some players who are good wide receiver pivots. And I and to me, this was someone that I had in one of my leagues that didn't play. It was a little bit of a surprise to me, George, to see Brandon Cook so active for Dallas in week one against Cleveland. Seven targets. Four receptions, 40 yards, and a touchdown. And I know Cooks isn't going to do this every week, George, but if he does it every other week, you know, that's eight touchdowns and 900 yards on the season. Take that any day of the week from him. Absolutely. Uh, Cooks is what he is, right? I remember the Cowboys only have really two true threats, right? We all know CeeDee Lamb, right? Great. And then it's Jake Ferguson. And Ferguson's iffy. Right, he's got the uh, the knee bruise, bone on bone. There, we'll see if he's going to play here. He'll be a game time decision there. So, uh, you know, if, if if Ferguson's out, Cooks now becomes your number two. Another thing to keep yeah. in mind: Marshawn Lattimore, quarterback, uh, cornerback uh, for New Orleans. He's also iffy to play. I think he's got a hamstring injury, if I remember correctly here, and he's uh, struggled with practice this week. He could be out once again, game time decision. Uh, so if he's out. All of a sudden, the passing game looks much better for the Cowboys, right? Much better, I think, for everybody here. I think Dak will have a much easier game. People forget that. uh, The Cowboys won easily against uh, Cleveland in week one. Dak didn't light it up. You know, they didn't have to, mind you. The defense took care of that. But it wasn't like uh, the Cowboys had a great uh, uh, game through the air. You mentioned earlier, I think, in in segment one or segment two, a lot of quarterbacks did not exactly put up big numbers here. Uh, Dak in week one, 1932 for 179 yards. That's it. Those are numbers from the 70s, right? That's what a quarterback would get there, and we'd love him. So uh, I do expect more from the Cowboys this week at home against the Saints, especially if Lattimore's out. I think Cooks will be a nice play. Yep, agreed. Two two receivers should be starting for Dallas, I think, in a lot of these leagues this week. All right, so uh, do you start now a second receiver in Indianapolis? And surprising the name to maybe start is Alec Pierce, uh, not anybody else. And 11% owned. Two long passes, as George alluded to earlier. There were some long patch passes to Mitchell that Richardson did not complete on, but Pierce was fantastic. Uh, I, you know, I'm probably going to leave this one on the waiver wire for me, George. But look, you, if you have injuries, this is the kind of guy that maybe you just take a shot on. It could be there. Are a couple of problems here. We talked earlier about Mitchell, right? He uh, he should have had two long, long deep shots. Uh, so uh, he's in the mix here. Downs is also back this week. All right, and he's. Theoretically, he's their number two. So what does that do to targets for Pierce? All right, so I think we want to be careful here. I'm with you here. He's someone I'm looking at here. And maybe I pick him up. All right, fine, he's there. I have a dead spot on my roster. Fine, go out and grab him. You know, maybe uh, you know, you, maybe you, you put Marquise Brown on IR. Hey, grab Pierce. Fine. Nothing right. to lose here. But I'm not, I don't want to drop anyone of value on my team for him. Like there's a little too many cooks in the kitchen here. Let's see what Downs can do this week. Let's see how, how much a part of the game plan Pierce still is. All right, now uh, let's go to a couple of guys named Robinson. First, we'll start off with Demarcus Robinson. And if you go back a couple of fantasy seasons ago, there was thought that Demarcus Robinson could be a star in the NFL. Well, he's going to get his chance now, although that other Rams wide receiver through the years has not proven to be profitable. We can go through a lot of names. We could go through, uh, you know, Atwell was a name that was there for a while, uh, George, on the uh, Los Angeles Rams, and certainly didn't work out. Van Jefferson was another name there. Uh, Demarcus Robinson now is going to take the spot of Puka Nakua. He had four receptions for 42 yards. And then Wandale Robinson, who was a nice little pickup when the Giants had no wide receivers, he caught six balls for 44 yards this past week. But, George, I'm here to tell you, I think I'm leaving both of those out. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't have any confidence in the Giants right now. It's really hard for me to get behind them. And track record is going to tell me that Matthew Stafford is going to lock in on one guy. I mean, he just – the second wide receiver on the Rams has never been a good venture. I, listen, I'd like to play devil's advocate and argue with you here, but uh, it's tough, all right? Uh, because with, uh, with D-Rob, you also got Tyler Johnson. Maybe he's the guy. You know, if, if, he, if you're actually insisting that someone's going to be uh, valuable on the Rams besides a cup, which, once again, I might take issue with, it could be Tyler Johnson over D-Rob. I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't think anybody knows here. We don't know what staff is going to be like. I think one of them could be valuable, or maybe they split it. You know, and it makes neither one of them valuable unless they get to the end zone here. So I think I'm avoiding that situation as well here. Now, 
Giants. All right, we know they're terrible. Uh, the one, the one thing I can tell you this: Daniel Jones in his career has been good against the Commanders. All right, so they're playing the Commanders this week. That secondary yep. of Washington uh, is bad, really bad. So you know, for a one week, I don't mind taking Wandale Robinson this week. All right, because if there's one week where he could have a big week, could get in the end zone, Giants could score, score some points, do some damage here. I think it's Sunday against Washington. After that, I might want to get rid of him, move on to the next guy. But uh, that's, that's the best I can give you for Wandale is because of Daniel Jones' history against the Commanders. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, it's it's you know, very, very hard to start either of those. Kind of want to start look at a high total in the NFL and start a receiver. A good one for me would be the next one we're going to talk about. But again, he's owned in 50% of fantasy leagues. He opened up last week. I believe he scored, if I'm not mistaken, the first touchdown of Sunday. I think I'm right about that. Rashid Shahid of the New Orleans Saints. He uh, had a long touchdown, was quiet for the rest of the game, but this is who he is. I mean, George, at any point, this guy could pop off for a very long touchdown. How many times have we found these guys on the Saints before, these uh, these uh, extenders? Debrie Henderson comes to mind in the past. Three receptions, 73 yards on five targets. And a touchdown. I, I think he should be rostered. I, I don't know that you could play him every week, but I think he should be rostered because, again, uh, at this point, I think it's fair to say we're still waiting for the big breakout for Olave. It hasn't happened yet. Maybe Shahid is just as good as him. I I don't know if I'm going to say he's just as good as him. Olave is a good wide receiver. Why he was invisible against Carolina in week one, I have no answers for you. Just strange. Uh, they didn't need to, right? They took care of business, so uh, whatever it is here. Uh, Shahid should be rostered, I agree. Uh, wide receiver three, even if he's just a reserve guy. He's a nice guy to have on reserve to cover for your bye weeks. I'll take that gladly here. I don't think he's a play this week for a couple of reasons. One, I don't see Olave being invisible again. I just don't. They have to get him involved. They need to get him involved. Uh, two is, well, you're going up against that Dallas defense. Uh, that defense can play. It's at home. All right. Uh, Micah Parsons, we know that Dallas, the pass rush is going to get is going to get on car. If they can't keep the Cowboys, uh, you know, uh, they can't keep them honest with the run game here. Or if they get behind here, it could be all over but the crying for the Snow Man Saints again. It's what Dallas wants to do. So I don't think this is the game for Shahid here. Like I said, they're going to want to get Olave involved here, which means they're going to try and get him away from Diggs, get him on the rookie Kelly here, which means Shahid could be seeing a lot of Trayvon Diggs. Also not what you'll want here. I like Shahid, should be rostered, but I'm not starting him this week. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that George, it's a you know, fair question. Is there anyone else that you've targeted out there this week? Did you make any other ads, pickups? Uh, you know, I, I was relatively quiet this week. I'm still shopping for a running back, but for the most part, I think my wide receivers have been okay. My wide receivers have generally been okay as well. I think Josh Palmer is somebody I still like. Uh, once again, uh, we're talking 12 team leagues here. 10 team leagues, you should be okay. Uh, Reed, uh, he certainly could be available for Green Bay, although I'm staying away from all Green Bay players because of uh, the injury here. I don't think Malik Willis is going to do much at all, so I don't see that. Uh, listen, I think the big ad, of course, has got to be Alan Lazard. We all went out to the waiver wire and wanted to add this guy into the big game. Apparently, he isn't. Aaron Rodgers plays. Lazard to start. Yeah, I, and yeah, and, and I think that look, there's if you dive a little bit deeper, you can definitely find somebody capable to start for you for one week. We haven't really reached the point, and we won't reach the point for a few weeks on trades. But stick with us throughout the fantasy season. We'll see if we can come up with some options for you. Coming up next here on the show, we dive into the running back position, and this is as thin as it gets. There just simply aren't a lot of options out there. In a lot of fantasy leagues, uh, usually 50 to 70% owned on most of the ones that are backups and even third strings, even the you know, 49ers third string is 10% owned, I saw it in some league too. So uh, stick with us here. By the way, don't forget tomorrow morning, uh, Joe Pizapia, Matt Stryker, Sunday morning, they got you right up until Pro Football Today right here on Sports Grid, getting you the last minute information that you need to help you win in fantasy football. We'll be back right after this with more Craig and George. Don't go away.
there is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. You know what? What can one of these quarterbacks or wide receivers do for me this year to make a wager? It's got to be the running conditions there for Jaden Daniels. In regards to Jaden Daniels, you know I was on him in regards to the Heisman Trophy. I actually think he's going to do it on the ground, through the air, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions, playing in Cliff Kingsbury's offense where he wants to spread it and throw it. I think he's going to put up dynamic numbers. Pro Football Today, only on SportsGrid. The only streaming sports betting network. Tips, info, and insights to up your IQ. It's smarter to be on SportsGrid. New to the Live Golf Plus app. Watch Live Golf any way you want it. Follow any group. Replay any shot. Anytime, anywhere. Any questions? Watch Live Golf Live and On Demand. He had four grabs in the first half for just over 30 yards, was injured, came back in briefly, and then had to be carted off. We were pessimistic on Puka Nakua's injury to the same right knee of that being a nothing, just a bursa, and that's it, as per Sean McVay. Uh, we felt there could be a small PCL component. The early line, only on Sports Grid. You may remember a couple of years ago when Etienne came on the scene. And then got hurt. Who was the primary guy? It was James Robinson. And the coaching staff liked to use two guys. I think they probably will end up using two running backs in Jacksonville, which makes Bigby at the very least someone to pick up. Agreed. Uh, I grabbed him in my home league here as he was available. Very happy to get him. Uh, I, once again, most teams don't have a pure running back one, right? They want to go to some kind of committee. It may be a 60-40 committee, maybe a 70-30 committee. But there's a reason why we take like guys like McCaffrey so early, like we want him, because he is a guy who's going to get, when he's healthy, he's going to get all the, all the play here. But most teams don't believe in that, or they don't have guys who can do that. So, yeah, a running back uh, two on a team is valuable here. And I like Tank Bigsby. I think, listen, I think there's also some worry here because uh, you can make a pretty strong argument that Jacksonville lost that game to Miami last week because oh, yeah. Etienne fumbled at the one yard line, you know. So I think there's some anger here with them as well, and maybe uh, at the very least, Bigsby's a bigger back that he's going to get those carries once they get in close. Although that wasn't a goal line carry, by the way, he was actually running in from I don't know the ten yard line when the uh, defender made a, a little punch out there of the ball. So, uh, but I think Bigsby will be a decent player for you. I think most running back two, twos on most teams should be grabbed here. So uh, Bigsby, yes, I like the, the addition of Bigsby. Yeah, uh, another hot pickup this week, but he still uh, pr may be available in a 12 or 14 team league on the waiver wire, depending on how active your league is, is the running back on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Bucky Irving. We heard a lot about him. He played well in the preseason. Rashad White sort of came out of nowhere last year to have the season that he did, especially late in the year, catching a lot of balls out of the backfield. Remember, it used to be uh, Tom Brady with his favorite running back, Leonard Fournette, at running back. It was not that long ago, but uh, White came on the scene last year. There were some people who felt the advanced metrics showed that he was a little bit lucky, maybe not as good. And uh, Irving thus far, 62 rushing yards, also caught two balls out of the backfield. Very similar situation, it feels like to me, with Bigsby. Although I think Irving, it felt like he was drafted in a lot more leagues than Bigsby was. Yeah, I think the ball, uh, you know, during draft time, I was talking about Rashad White was, well, he's a product of volume. He's not really great, but he got all the touches last year. So that's why he had the numbers he had fantasy-wise, because there was no one else to take it away from him. Now, uh, Bucky Irving, who got some play during uh, draft time, we were talking about him, that he might take away, you know, a certain percentage of those touches, whether it be 30%, 35%, 40%. And that might continue here. So, yeah, I think, uh, once again, this is not a guy who's not going to play. 
All right, it's like, you know, Rashad White's not going to get 30 touches and no one else is going to touch the ball. Bucky Irving will play. So even if you started him this week, he'd give you some volume there. And there will be injuries. Uh, we know that. we got to get guys who can cover. There will be bye weeks are coming up in two weeks. We forget about that, right? Uh, I think it's first week in October we start the bye weeks where you're going to have uh, your running backs that are down here. Irving's a nice guy. Not only is he a chance, he, you know, if Rashad White ever gets hurt, Bucky Irving all of a sudden is a running back one. But even without, even with Rashad White there, there should be enough to go around. Also, Teams don't care. Defense don't care about Rashad White or Irving. They're worried about Evans and Godwin. Never going to see a you know never going to see an eight man front. Peyton Barber not walking through that door this time, right, George? For Tampa Bay, stealing some carries there. Don't don't feel like this is going to happen this time. Uh, okay, so now the last one, and we we saw uh, you know Jamal Williams on the waiver wire go from like one percent owned, he jumped to about six percent after his game that he had this past week in garbage time where the Saints were absolutely crushing the Carolina Panthers. Williams, to me, George, is just strictly the handcuff to Alvin Kamara. As long as Kamara is healthy, he's going to get most of the usage. I remember two years ago when Williams was incredible on the ground, scoring touchdowns for Detroit, completely fell off last year with the Saints. Uh, I'm a big fan of this person, Jamal Williams. He's a really nice guy. I saw he had all those fans on the field before the game. He's a good guy. Uh, but I, I don't see that this is repeatable. I, I don't see him rushing for 38 yards and a touchdown every single week. The game was out of hand. He's touchdown deodorant, right? Uh, the only way he's going to pay off fancy if he gets in the end zone, right? That's what you need here. And uh, deeper leagues, uh, I'll be honest, uh, that auto draft league I'm, I, I mentioned earlier where I have McCaffrey, I, I have some backup running backs, but one's Blake Corn. We didn't do anything last week. I may have to look at uh, adding Jamal Williams if uh, McCaffrey is indeed labeled out tomorrow, where he's not going to play here. I'll have to go for it. So uh, I don't expect much. Like I said, you're going to need him to get in the end zone. And we know that game, uh, you know, tomorrow in Dallas is not going to be a blowout. All right. It's, uh, I think it'll be a closer game, actually. I also don't think it's going to be very high scoring. So the odds of Jamal Williams playing off of you, paying off of you, not good. Yeah. Now, now let's go to, you know, some players that surprised this past week and very specifically JK Dobbins is going to hit that almost a hundred percent own mark after his game last week. I mean, he broke free a couple of times. It's never been talent. It's always been injuries. He looked way better than Gus Edwards. And I thought that we got a really good indication as to what Jim Harbaugh wants to do when he reached the podium after the game, it was all about run, 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 run. It feels like this guy just came out of Michigan and is turning this offense right into the chargers uh, you know, I you know, I I honestly think Gus Edwards may be a little bit of a buy low. I would not overreact to that bad first game for him. Harbaugh wants to run a lot. I think it's going to be two guys. And until Dobbins plays, what, five games in a row? I, I mean, I would not be trading for him. I probably would be saying, hey, look, if something happens, let me get Gus the bus. Uh, trading for him, boy, a uh, deal would have to be right right now. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's selling high. I would not trade. The price is too high. And Dob- Dobbins is really good when healthy. Problem is he's not, he's not healthy a lot. So uh, and he's gonna have another. I, I imagine have another good game this week, right? Who are they playing? They're playing Carolina. All right. So yeah, I expect that once again to light it up and probably get you eighteen plus tough fantasy points here. Which I mean, you should maybe you should be trying to sell them high, right? Because hey, now's the time. Who a schedule gets a little tougher and already gets hurt, and uh, you know the value plummets there. So yeah, I like Dobbs. I've got him in a league or two. He's starting this week, no doubt. Uh, and I think he'll be good this week again. Let's see when they play. You know, they played the Raiders last week. Not a great team either. Let's see what happens when they play a real team. Uh, so they just haven't had to do the first two weeks of the season. All right, bold predictions coming up next. George has got a few of those. And, of course, we will preview everything to come in hour number two. You're watching Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. Craig and George with you here every Saturday morning and whenever they're replaying this lovely show to get you ready for fantasy football on Sunday. We'll be right back with more. Don't go away. A new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting card. That was so the Lincoln! But he had that he program was already going there. Only on Sports Grid. 
Talk about your freshman year at Alabama and even the redshirt year that got you ready to perform at the highest level. You had to learn a lot about humility, about being patient to play at Alabama. And you still knew that you're going to have a shot to win a championship every year. And so that that's the line. And so I think like that's what's really missing with today's football. You got NIL, you got social media. The early line. Only on Sports Grid. Everyone had him. Rookie of the year, offensive yep. player of the year. Yep. Bears are going to the Super Bowl. Eber Blues yep. coach of the year. He was terrible. If he's going to be successful, he's got to play within structure as much as possible. I get it. If the pocket breaks down, throw off the platform. That's fine. But within structure, when the play is there to be made, you need to make it. And he didn't do that. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. 147 yards against the Jets and a touchdown? I mean, the numbers are incredible. It's, it's the Shanahan connection, and, and that's just what it feels like. And, you know, Jordan Mason came into that game with a career 5.6 yards per carry. He's always been a very tough runner. He's always been good when called upon in small doses. You know, you mentioned the yardage, which was impressive, but 20, 28 carries. You know, that's what I'm looking at. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports today. As we get ready to wrap up this hour, we got plenty more to come. We'll go over some props in just a few minutes. But first, we've got some bold predictions from George. George, i got to make a big decision this week. In my super flex league, okay, i got to start two of these three quarterbacks. Dak Prescott, Trevor Lawrence, and Justin Fields. And with that, I would ask you for your predictions this week. Well, funny you should mention uh, Justin Fields, right? Uh, I mean, last week, he, he was sort of a surprise starter, right? It was a mixed bag as far as uh, Fields was concerned. I know most of us have seen the, uh, you want to call it the strike zone box, where he threw nothing, nothing over the middle of the field against uh, Atlanta. That's got to change this week. Uh, now, listen, they play a tough defense again uh, in Denver here. Fields is going to run. Right, he can run. It's what he does. I think he gets over 100 yards this week. I think they need him to get over 100 yards. I think they're going to have a game plan designed to get him. I think he had five or six design runs last week. I think he's going to double that this week. He's going to get 10 to 12 design runs, not to mention what he's going to do on a regular basis anyway. I think Justin Fields will end up being a quarterback one, or one this week, mainly because he rushes for over 100 yards. Number two. All right, I'm going back to the well here. All right, I was on Daniel Jones last week uh, also. That didn't work out. That didn't work out at all. Uh, Daniel Jones, the history tells us, and I mentioned it earlier in the show, he plays well against the Washington Commanders. The Commanders, may, if they don't have the worst secondary in the NFL, it's bottom five worst, right? It's a bad secondary. We found out uh, uh, Friday that Malik Neighbors, uh, listen, you want to believe, uh, believe Brian Dable, he's going to play. He's fine. We talked about Wandell Robinson earlier in the show here. Uh, Darius Slayton, a little iffy there. The Giants have some speed here. They can break some big plays here. I think Daniel Jones, oh, we're going to lay off him for a week. He's going to have a big, he will have a big week. I was off a week. All right? He's going to have a big week on Sunday. going to throw for three touchdowns. I'm not going to guarantee you uh, uh, that he's going to uh, get over 300 yards or win the game, but that he will get three touchdowns here uh kansas city uh listen cincinnati's a mess all right i don't know what they're going to be able to do offensively here so i don't expect much here i think they keep the ball on the ground isaiah pacheco is an angry man when he runs the football right he runs angry he does not want to go down you're not getting this guy down with an arm tackle all right he wants to run through he wants to hurt you i think he's gonna have a big game on uh on so he's gonna be a running back one here uh in fantasy before the end he gets over 100 yards and a touchdown there and uh I expect another big uh, Kansas City win at home over the Cincinnati Bengals here. Uh, San Fran, this one, a little bit more uh, iffy. Depends on what's going to happen here uh, with uh, Christian McCaffrey. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? Uh, I think the fact that uh, Jordan Mason proved that if he plays, if he's a starter, he can do damage here. Right? They don't lose. Uh, listen, it's McCaffrey. He's the best running back in football. So I'm not, I don't want to tell you Mason's the same, but they don't lose an, an incredible amount by going with Jordan Mason here. That being said, I think Brandon Ayuk is still working himself into football shape. Did not have a good game against the Jets. I think it's a Debo Samuel game. 
I think it's a Debo Samuel game, whether it's uh, rushing the football. He'll get a couple of rushes there. He's going to be the main threat in the passing game as well. I think he gets in the end zone here. I like Debo Samuel to be a top 10 fantasy wide receiver this week, if not top five. Uh, the other one, last one, tight end was a disaster in fantasy. I mean, I don't – how many uh, people actually started Isaiah Likely? All right. Uh, I don't think many of us did, even if you had him on your, your roster there. Other than that, I mean, Laporta didn't have a good week, right? I mean, Kincaid, who we thought would be the main pass catch for Buffalo, really back-to-back week where he's disappointed here. Najoku got hurt. Ferguson got hurt. Uh, Andrews did very little. Kelsey did very little here. This has to be a rebound week four of the tight ends. Craig mentioned earlier how quarterback was so disappointing. Maybe that's why, because the tight ends just weren't getting open here. So many quarterbacks going for under 200 yards. It's like, it's like we went back in time 40 years here as far as the uh, quarterbacks are concerned. I think they figure it out a little bit better this week. I know all the hype is on uh, likely. Andrews had more snaps in this game than likely. I'll be the first person to tell you likely looked faster. Andrews looked a little slower here, but they both were wants to get. Andrews involved in the game here. They have an easier matchup this week. I think Andrews, once again, he sort of rebounds this week, 75 plus yards. He's going to get in the end zone. I think Lamar Jackson wants to get him in the end zone. Do you know who Isaac Garendo is? You know the name. I do. Are you familiar? You I, do. Okay. I'm going to ask you for a bold prediction over under one half a carry this coming week, the San Francisco 49ers. Over under <laughs> half a carry. Because if you tell me one, on I got to my... pick this guy up right now. He's on my dynasty team. Uh, not he starting is. him. Uh, it's, it's it's the forty man roster, man. Everybody. A half a I think carry. I get them around six. Over. 25. He's going to get a carry. He's got to get a touch. He's Come on. Get a carry. Over. Give the man the football. I mean, you just said Debo Samuel's top ten this week. I don't know how that could be with. Uh whoever they got running there. All right, uh, coming up at hour two, we'll do some fantasy props. we got some week two preview coming up, daily fantasy buy or sell, and, of course, the Sports Grid 60. Plenty more to come here on Fantasy Sports Today on Sports Grid. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start, so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting card. That was so the game! But he had that he program the was already going there. There. Only on Sports Grid. The sharpest football contest show in the land. The Las Vegas Football Contest Show focuses on Circus Sports Million, Circus Survivor, and the Westgate Super Contest. Handicapping the games and releasing our contest picks every week of the season. With two former Super Contest winners, Brady Cannon and James Salinas, a former NFL player, Mike Pritchard, and over $1 million in contest prize money won combined, the Las Vegas Football Contest Show will have you prepared this season like nothing.